beyond amazing even because, I mean, you take this design here. Now, this is clearly not uh, a projectile point. It looks like some sort of ceremonial design. What, uh, what's that one all about? Well, that's what that is. It's what we call or have been labeled as eccentrics. I think in archaeology, these are things that we used to call uh, ceremonial objects. Uh, where oftentimes, we just didn't know what they were. Um, but people are making things like this, uh, fetishes, animal fetishes, bird fetishes. You know, again, like the Mayans, we're making these staff heads with different faces mm -hmm. on there. Um, we see a variety of things here. I'm just going to try to make one for you. This actually is a, is, a, is a double bladed knife, but at the same time, I could probably be hafted up and made into like a little tomahawk or a hatchet or something along that line. So, you know, it's, it is, you can do a variety of things with it. Now, this is something that we need to take a look at here. This is what I'm going to make my eccentric out of. Um, this is what we would call a spear point, an arrowhead, you know, a big spear sure. point, or a, if you put notches on there, that you'd have the, you know, classic spearhead, or even a knife blade. You have that onto a handle. You know, they make a nice knife blade, which is typically what, you know, most of your Native American blades are small like this because they work very well. Um, they're nice and small like this, so they don't break as easily here. But from this, and this is one of the joys of being a modern napper, is I can take this and play with this however I want to. So let's see what we can turn out of this thing here. Um, so I'll we'll start right here. We'll do this notching here. This is, uh, this is what takes a little bit of time here, and a little bit of practice. This is something that took me literally years to figure out how to do uh, without breaking things. And it's hard to see what's going on here. And the object here is to start chipping out the center of this thing and hollowing it out. You know, and it's, it's like just about everything in a, with a human analogy to it. It's like eating an elephant. You know, it's all one bite at a time and, and being very patient with this thing and not being in a hurry. Um, you know, and that gets us into, you know, one of the things with Native Americans and, and their worldview in terms of time and art and things along that line. It's much different than the way that we Westerners looked at things, and I include myself in that Westerner group here. And um, It's not time and energy expenditure that was important. It was providing the best piece of work that you can out of this material, and, or out of whatever you're doing here. Um, well, and things were much more seasonal. Yeah, well, sense. you know, for natural societies, you usually had daytime and nighttime, you know, and springtime and summertime and fall. And, and there are times to do different kinds of things. Um, and people needed different tools for different times of the year. And it's one of the traditional things is in terms of education is, you know, fall and winter is when people did a lot of that material, studying and fixing their tools and cleaning everything up here. See, so starting to hollow that out here a little bit more. And this just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. One of the things that you see that, for example, out of the the uh, National Geographic issue a few years ago they had on uh, Mayan hey, eccentrics. Things, uh... On Mayan eccentrics, one of the things that wow. they say is it took uh, you know these guys hundreds of hours to to uh, make these eccentrics. And uh, as master napper, I know it probably took these guys hundreds of hours to learn how to do it. But it probably didn't take them any more than like two, three, four days to make some of these things if they were that good at it. Um, so now we need to come over here and, and chip away at the face here a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's just like any art that's out there. You know, it's, it's a reductive kind of an art. It's where all you have to do is remove what doesn't need to be there. So we find a variety of these kind of things, uh, eccentrics, uh, more often than not, often placed with engraves, engraved goods. I'm not quite finished with it, but we'll get there. So as this process gets going here, so in essence, you're, you're kind of creating a, a rock sculpture. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. uh, people use these things as, you know, in their medicine bags as spirit. Uh, kinds of things. They're, they're, you know, they're spirit helpers and spirit beings that they've gotten associated with. And bears are one of those things that people put a lot of power in. It's one of those critters that stands upright and, you know, it's got energy. Well placed. Yeah. And we find this particularly in northern climate peoples. We find this all around the world with bears, you know, from 
the Apple Laplanders and the Russians, the Ainu in northern Japan, the Indians in the plains, uh, the Eskimos. So, you know, essentially this is what we've got here with the, with the little bear, you know, getting something done along this line. Something like this can be just used as a symbolic kind of a thing or placed back, you know, into a, an altar of sorts. Or this can be used in terms of, uh, you know, like making an edge on there, making a scraper edge on here. Let me show you here. It's one of the things I like to do here is they make great little knives. If you take these things and, and chip the edge up here, set this platform up right. Okay, so we set that prep, right, prep series up. Come back up one more time, grind it up really good. And come back and take one more series off of here and I'll show you how sharp that can get. Now, as, as you work that one, I noticed on, on some of the objects that you had, had already done here, there, there's, a, I guess, more of a gloss to it. Is there something you do to polish it when it's, when it's no. all done? No. The obsidian is, uh, you can't get a, a, a finer polish or shine on it than you can if, when you fracture the obsidian. Um, it takes a lot of work, even with diamond, diamond grinding machines, to polish up an obsidian. It's about eight on the hardness scale. Um, that's why they hold up so well as skinning knives, is because they, they uh, uh, because it is so hard. What it does dull through time is, is literally from time that the energy flows away from the edge. So that you don't get, you know, it's not, it's not like through wear, unless you use hard materials. So mm -hmm. let me show you here one more time. We'll get the cutting edge here one more time. Okay, we'll get set. Okay, let me show you here. It's a, it's a matter of sawing first and then pushing on the edge here. And you get the really super sharp serrated edge. And this is one of the things that Native Americans were creating on their tools were these these original Ginsu blades, if you will, these original sharp edges. So, you know, not only can you make non-functional kinds of things, but functional things out of them as well. Uh, people made all kinds of right materials. So, yeah. Well, you know, beyond the, the functional aspects of this, which I, I think you've made rather perfectly clear here, the, the aesthetics of it really is the, uh, and, and, and important, if not more important, and perhaps most important of all is the, is the, the notion of technology, if you will, that the skill that's here is in no sense of the word primitive. Uh, it's, it, 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 for all intents and purposes, primitive is the term that we've used to, to label those individuals that have used stone tools. Um, but we take a look at the human behavior that's associated with the making of stone tools. Much of what they, people in the past have done is what we are using today in our tools. Um, we take a look at from a teacher's point of view, the concept of learning. Uh, we look at the same kinds of things that uh, that we learn as, as children learn in our society. We can pick back in the past and we can see things like having natural talent to be able to do certain kinds of things and then along with that talent having the desire to learn how to make certain kinds of things or to do certain kinds of things. Um, and then come with those other things of learning with the frustration and the pain and you can see this in stone tools where someone really got frustrated and you must know they must have cut themselves and, and we get into the cultural knowledge that people had in terms of medicines when they do cut themselves. We know that Native Americans had knowledge of well over 400 different kinds of plants they used for medicines, um, information that we still need to get some understanding of. And one of the things that we see of is that people who learn to do these kind of behaviors starting out as children, this is a behavior as complex as anything that we humans can learn to do today, walking and talking and computer work and those kind of things. Um, and we need to get away from the concept that these are very primitive people that don't know what they're doing. These are very highly culturally adapted people to a particular environment and, uh, and could do some incredible things with their tools. Uh, so. Well, I hope everyone has gained a, a real appreciation here of uh, just exactly the complexity and, and the artistry of all of the natural peoples that lived along uh, our coast as, as well as uh, natural peoples in general. Uh, and we will continue with our discussion of the natural peoples of the Arctic tomorrow and uh, uh, proceed from there into the arrival of the first Europeans. So until then, uh, see you later.